Welcome everyone. Thank you all for attending our live webinar today. My name is Riley and I assist in coordinating our various free webinars um, we hold every month that we post on our events page um, on our website. I'm here in our head office in Perth, Western Australia. Um, to those of you who are new to these webinars, um, we have a couple of free technical topic webinars a month in different disciplines of engineering um, that we advertise on our events page. So be sure to stay updated with our upcoming webinars. Um, for those of you who have, have attended one of our webinars pre uh, previously, thank you and welcome back. Um, today's technical topic webinar will investigate the hypothetical question of what if Leonardo da Vinci used CAD software, um, which is being presented by Dr. R.T. Sipura, one of our treasured lecturers in mechanical engineering here at EIT. Um, currently, she is um, streaming from our Bent Bentley campus in Western Australia. Um, and we'd just like to note that um, we'd like to keep these webinars as interactive as possible. Um, so please use the chat box if you have any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share during the session. Um, if we still have time, some time at the end, um, we'll hold a QA and a session where you can ask any questions um, in which you may have um, and we'll try and answer, the for, uh, answer those for you live. Um, these webinars are recorded and you will receive a copy of the PDF slides and the link to the recording in an email within the next two business days. Um, we also offer a free digital certificate of attendance for our technical topic webinars. Um, so I will provide a link um, at the end of the session to an online form um, in which you must um, complete to receive one. Um, certificate of attendances will also be sent out in the next two business days as well. Um, I will be online. Uh, I'll be live and online in the chat box, so I'll try to respond to you during the session. If anyone has um, any any questions or anything, um, so without any further delay, I'd like to hand over now to Dr. Arti, um, who will be presenting this technical topic webinar for us all today. So thank you very much, Arti. Thank you very much, Riley. Hello and welcome, everyone. My name is Aarti and I am a mechanical engineer. I have been in the field of academia for more than 16 years now and engineering drawing is something I started my career with. So it is a um, very special unit, very special field for me. Uh, my research interests are mainly in the area of condition monitoring, automation and main focus is on improving unmanned toolware prediction methods. So that's the agenda for today's webinar. Um, we are basically trying to, as Riley has mentioned, answer or get answers for that hypothetical question. What if Leonardo da Vinci used a CAD software? So basically we will try to combine the two. First, we will try to know a bit more about Leonardo da Vinci, a bit about CAD softwares and what he could have achieved using those CAD softwares through today's technical webinar. So please stay with me and yep, we will go through this and we will try to answer that question. All right, so starting with who was Leonardo da Vinci? So Leonardo da Vinci, he was born on April 15, 1452 in Vinci, which was in the Republic of Florence in Italy at that time. Um, da Vinci means from Vinci or the town of Vinci itself. So um, that's him. Um, what comes to the mind when I mention Leonardo da Vinci first time? I won't give you a lot of time. Just please let me know through the chat box what comes to the mind. The first thing that comes to the mind when Leonardo da Vinci is mentioned. Any of the contributions that Leonardo da Vinci has made in any of the field that you can think of? Yeah. 
Yep, so I am getting quite a few answers here. Um, John Neal suggesting an inventor. Abdikani, art. Napoleon is suggesting designer, artist. Priya is suggesting painting. Melinda is suggesting Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa being mentioned by Mr. Salazi as well. Painter, innovator, paintings, artists. So, yep, that is the expected answer. That's what I would think as well if I wasn't an engineer. So, these are some of the great contributions, artistic contributions, I must say, from Leonardo da Vinci. Mona Lisa, one of the most famous paintings, The Last Supper, another one, and with Trivian Man. So, we know him more as an artist but who actually he was, what are his contributions? So in order to understand that, let's try to understand a polymath because I would consider him a polymath of his time. And let me tell you, probably I won't be wrong in saying so. Um, Leonardo da Vinci is the ultimate model of a man who stretched and flexed his brain's ability for creativity and original ideas. Although he's best known for his artistic contribution, his paintings, he was um, more than that. Basically, you can say that he was a painter, sculptor, architect, musician, scientist, mathematician, engineer, inventor, anatomist, geologist, cartographer, botanist, and writer. Basically, a polymath. This is the, this is the definition of word polymath uh, from Dic uh, Dictionary of Cambridge. So basically, he fits in this definition. He was a multi-talented person. And the term polymath has also evolved with time. We can see how it has evolved over time. So initially, he was considered as a Renaissance man. And then for the modern time, I think it will be more appropriate to mention him as a polymath. So he is widely considered as one of the painters of his time. but he had a relentless curiosity and impulse to investigate. He wanted to know about everything. Whatever knowledge was there, he, he wanted to gain that knowledge. So um, let's go a bit more in detail about Leonardo da Vinci's history. He was an illegitimate child. And as an illegitimate child, it's not it used, it wasn't that shameful at that time. But the main constraint there that he wouldn't have access to formal grammar school education. His education was mainly limited to basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. So lack of um, that formal education means um, he wasn't taught Greek or Latin. And most of the books, or basically the knowledge, if we can consider it as a knowledge, not exactly the books, it was in Greek or Latin at that time. Most of the scholars, they were conversing with each other in Greek and Latin. So perhaps being excluded from studying the past or those books or knowledge which was existent at, a, at that time, that helped him to develop his openness to novel ideas. He learned by observation more than following any teaching of the past. He also um, this thing also resulted in the fact that he didn't or he couldn't converse much with the scholars or academics of that time. And probably that's why he didn't gain that much popularity as a scientist. He is more known as an artist first. Now, what characterizes his genius is the transversality of his desire to know. And this allows him to cross the boundaries between disciplines by facing studies with a more extended approach. Um, in his own words, this is what he said, to develop a complete mind, study the science of art, study the art of science, develop your senses, learn how to see, understand that everything is connected. He saw that great connection between art and science. So he brought these two fields together. He didn't see them as competing field, but he saw them as complementing fields. So um, mathematics has also great influence on um, Leonardo da Vinci, and let's see how. So um, if he is known for artistic work, but his main interests were around um, perspective, symmetry, proportions, and geometry. So this has significant impact on his drawings. For example, if we have a look at this one, the Annunciation, parallel lines, horizon line, and vanishing point, these are the main main things that we can notice in this particular artwork. Now, in order to create the illusion of depth on a flat surface, he used all those things. 
um, he uses the perspective to emphasize the corner of this building. You can see it over here. He has also used the same perspective to um, show this walled garden and provide that bit of a depth to that particular artwork. Another example is this, The Last Supper. It's a prime example of use of mathematics of perspective. If you pay attention to architecture of this building, here and here around Jesus and 12 apostles, and also the lines on the floor were here and here. Um, they create a vanishing point and they provide a subconscious focal point. Although there is no particular focal point, more or less you can see that we have a subconscious focal point over here in the painting around Jesus. So that's how he, he combined mathematics and art. He was also aware of Vitruvius's work and he knew that we can take navel as a center and we can draw a perfect circle around the body of a person with outstretched arms and legs. So he used that in this work of Vitruvian men. Now, apart from that, he also realized the relationship between span of the arm and height of a person, which can give you a perfect square. So that's how this Vitruvian man was completed. And finally, one last thing um, before we start having a look at codex. So um, uh, how many of us are aware about golden ratio in mathematics? Does anyone know the golden ratio? Yep, exactly. 1.618 is the golden ratio. And if we have two different things, if we sum them up to different measurements and we divide by the greater one out of the two, if the ratio is 1.618, it gives us aesthetically pleasing results. For example, we can apply that golden ratio to this rectangle he might have used, golden ratio to the face of Mona Lisa, etc. So he was already aware about existence of golden ratio and he didn't only use it to achieve aesthetically pleasing results in this Mona Lisa, but also used it to achieve accurate proportionality in this particular artwork. So um, that is about him. Now, most of um, work that Leonardo da Vinci did um, is stored or it's preserved in the form of Codex Atlanticus. Um, not sure if all of us are aware about this, but basically it's um, more than 1000 pages and it's bound in 12 different volume. It includes um, so many pages of writings and so many pages just depicting various sketches, drawings, etc. He started keeping notes when he was 26 years old and um, his notes or this Codex Atlanticus at the moment that we know it as, it express his questioning and his exploration of life. Um, the, these are all unedited outpourings. You can say it's a mixture of observations about the world around him, various theories, drawings, observations, and ideas. So these are some of the pages from his work, Codex Atlanticus. And he didn't limit him, himself in his notebooks. And he started looking for how various things connect in all different novel ways. So these notebooks demonstrate um, restlessness in his thinking. The pages of this Codex Atlanticus, they are jumble of ideas and lines of inquiry, jumping from one topic to another topic. Here you can see most of the work in the field of anatomy, but his work was not only limited to anatomy, it spanned across botany, optics, architecture, astronomy, military engineering, aerodynamics, music, painting, flight, costume design, robotics, and lot more. A few more examples from his work over here. 
So his quest for universal knowledge through observation, speculation, and experimentation, it laid the groundwork for all the future studies. Not sure how many of us are aware about this, but he sketched the first parachute, the first helicopter, first airplane, first tank, first repeating rifle, swinging bridge, pedal boat, and first motor car as well. So um, that was his genius. All right, so after um, being marveled at amazing abilities and inventions of Leonardo da Vinci, let's change our focus to something else. Let's try to understand the importance of pictures or drawing in our life. We draw from really early age and we love to draw. And this particular ability, we can consider it as a tool of creativity in many fields. Just imagine if you have to explain one of the Vinci's um, inventions, just verbally, not using even hands, just verbally, just try and give it a thought. How difficult would it be? You are not allowed to draw any sketch. You're not allowed to move your arms. You're only using your words. It would be pretty difficult, right? So the profession of engineering is based on pictorial or graphical communication because engineering has that artistic component with pictures being more effective than written words. We might have at some point heard this. A picture is worth a thousand words. So the drawing is critical to the original design intent and its subsequent passage to its manufacturing stages and ultimately um, being launched as a final product. So here is the historical timeline of technical drawing. It all started quite early because as i mentioned we love drawing humans are fond of drawing and we like pictorial um, expressions so um you can see that around this renaissance period this um perspective and aerial perspective evolved and then around 20th century standard practices all started and the modern abilities of CAD you can see evolved around this past 100 years. And here is more recent timeline showing how all those modern features of CAD evolved on during this past few decades. All right, so capabilities of CAD, what CAD can do? Some just basic capabilities I mentioned over here, we can create 2D drawing files, 3D wireframe or surface models or even solid models can also be created and it can perform so many of um, things like geometric modeling, engineering analysis and so on. In order to understand those features a bit more in detail, I have these capabilities listed over here. So for example, CAD can focus on mathematical computation, Product life management. So this particular tool will let you have full control on all the data of your product, starting from conception all the way to obsolescence. Rendering will let you create photorealistic photo images, surfacing, um, architecture, engineering, construction, and building information modeling, electronic design, computer-aided design, kinematic or motion analysis. You can simulate the motion displacement, velocity, acceleration, finite element analysis. Um, we can basically use it to simulate solid mechanics like static and dynamic structural analysis, etc. Fatigue simulation throughout the lifespan of the product. Computational fluid dynamics. It can be used to simulate fluid flow, air or water or any other fluid. And then it can also be combined with heat transfer or temperature analysis, acoustics, vibrations and noise, EMAG, that is simulation of electromagnetic fields, and optimization, multi-physics, and computer-aided manufacturing. So these are so many different capabilities of CAD. All right, now before we move on, here is a question for you all. What are different applications of CAD? Can anyone tell me? If you're working in the field, you have seen a particular application, please let me know through the chat box. Whatever application you have seen or you can think of.
so many of um, great applications I can see here in the chat box. Thank you very much, everyone. Instrumentation, mechanical design, structural design, electrical control panel drawings, industrial and mechanical design, structural analysis, sewer design, finite element analysis, civil design, P and IDs, road design, CAD simulation, solid works, 3D CAD, 3D printing, and whatnot. So applications of CAD are virtually unlimited. Wherever you can think a drawing can be used, a CAD is pretty much applicable everywhere. Thank you very much, everyone. So here are a few of the CAD applications. You can draw architectural drawings, interior design. Um, it, it spans across so many fields and so many industries. Virtually, as I already mentioned, almost every industry can benefit from CAD. So here are a few examples of various industries that can benefit from CAD. So aerospace, architecture, automotive, cartography, civil, fashion design, interior design, landscaping, etc., are some of the examples. Not all of them though. And let me show you some of the CAD applications. So we can start from a simple part design like this using CAD. We can convert a 3D electrical into a 2D electrical using CAD simulation of robotic arm or simulation of human bones or even simulation of human heart computational fluid dynamics can be used there it can also be used here what is that it's the fluid flow analysis for wind farm or urban planning you can say these are all little wind windmills and we are trying to figure out the cfd analysis for that and this here is the displacement analysis for belly racer once we put the driver in the seat. So how much displacement will take place? So these are some of the examples of CAD applications. All right, moving on and having a look at some of the Leonardo da Vinci's codices in CAD form. All right, so this is the self-propelling car that he came up with. And this one uses the principles of clockwork and the age old use of winding power into both wood with rope to move it along. None of this, let me tell you, none of this were cutting edge technology at that time. They were already there, but what Leonardo did, he used them in a very different manner to make this self propelled car. He didn't actually make it, it is just a sketch. Now, um, just as a side note, a lot of Leonardo da Vinci's inventions, they stayed only on the paper. So this is one of them. Um, so what we have done here using solid modeling, we have created each and every part for that. And then solid assembly modeling, we created entire assembly. We assembled them flawlessly into this final cart. We created the exploded view to show how each and every part will get assembled with respect to the main frame. And then motion analysis can also be carried out. I will try to show you um, after all those codices how um, this motion analysis will look like. Another one is this um, Codex Atlanticus Folio 33, and that is this Canon. So the Canon, uh, basically it, it is the one which can be set at any precise angle. And for that, they are using this screw and this pinion arrangement. So as the screw is rotated manually, the pinion will rotate and we can precisely decide the angle of launch for cannonball. What have been done here? Solid modeling of each and every part and then assembly modeling to assemble all those parts into this final cannon assembly. And then we have provided this sectional view over here as well. So how it will look like once we section it through the middle plane, something like this. And then of course, motion analysis to make sure that how each and every component will move with input motion being provided over here. Next is this swing bridge, which I mentioned once before as well. So again, we have used assembly design or assembly modeling here after part modeling. Generative shape design has been used and 3D representations. You can see a bit of water and grass field has been used here as well. So that is 3D representation and also the exploded view of this particular assembly. 
This is a pedal bot. And again, some of the CAD abilities that has been used to bring this um, sketch to life is solid modeling, assembly modeling, exploded view. You can see exploded view over here, uh, how each and every component will fit with respect to the main frame. Motion analysis can be carried out. Creative experience has been added over here to make it look more realistic and also rendering will help with creative experience. Apart from that, one new item we can see here is the bill of material. So that is also one of the CAD abilities. You can easily create a bill of material and that will give you the idea of what components are being used in that particular assembly. Now, this is something really marvelous, I would say. So uh, Leonardo, he could have combined two of his own magnificent ideas to invent something new with the help of CAD if CAD would have existed at that time and if he, he could have used it. So here we have Helix system that he came up with, this particular one, and the flying machine. And we have combined them two into this particular wing suit. I will try to show you this if I can um, once I've gone through this crisis. So um, yeah, combining two of his own ideas into another invention. And this is the Scythe Chariot, um, one of his um, famous war machine drawing in pen and ink and wash. And we can foresee the advent of tank or armored car through this Scythe Chariot. The four whirling scythes in the front of the horse, as you can see over here, that would render um, infantry ineffective to attack or stop the chariot. And the wheels and sides behind this beats, wheels do have sides, although they are not that much visible here. They are there. And um, yeah, they, they can also protect the rider from attack in the rear. So what has been done here, Those um, this entire machine has been divided into some sub-assemblies using CAD, and those sub-assemblies have been combined into one final assembly of this scythe chariot. And Gran Cavallo is something I have to mention. So um, that was an interesting project. So around 1482, Duke of Milan, um, Ludovico Sforza, he commissioned Leonardo to create the largest bronze horse statue in the world. Not only did its sheer size make it a tremendous challenge for Da Vinci. Da Vinci was actually busy was with uh, many other um, projects at that, at that time. But still, a 24-foot tall um, clay model of that horse statue was unveiled in 1493. Da Vinci collected around 58,000 pounds of tin and copper for eventual casting of this sculpture. But French invasion, um, it put his plans on hold. The tin and copper that he collected, it were made into cannons, and the huge clay model was destroyed by French soldiers in 1499. Basically, um, this Grand Cavallo didn't get made at that time. But this is what Da Vinci envisioned. So the only numerical information in his notes was about the height of the horse. It was supposed to be 24 feet tall statue, bronze statue. But apart from that, notes also provided drawings of the molds, ovens, casting system, as well as posture of the horse. Da Vinci also detailed his intention to cast this bronze in a single pore, just one big mold, single pore without any steel reinforcement. And he wanted to make two weight bearing legs of solid bronze. Now, mixture of earth used to make the molds and furnace um, opening sequences to cast the statue vertically in an upside down position. They were also described in the note. So he actually had two different plans to cast the statue upside down with the feet being up and rest of the body at the bottom. And he also had a plan to cast the statue in horizontal position, something like this. Now, dynamics of high temperature metal is really, really complex. Once it goes into molten state, um, it's very hard to predict. 
So for that reason, we actually need accurate simulation tools. Otherwise, the results will not be adequate and conclusions can't be used in any productive processes. But Leonardo did this really accurately. His calculations, his drawings, and his um, sketches were so, so, so perfect. Modern CFD analysis uh, can accurately predict the behavior of molten metal, how it will fill up the mold, and how it will solidify. Um, so we can verify the results if we would use Leonardo's mold, and if we try to fill up the way he has planned in his sketches, what will happen? So um, the results, um, let me tell you a bit of a history about it. The Institute and Museum of History of Science is located in Florence. And um, they contacted Flow Sciences Italian representative, XC Engineering, to study the feasibility of this design. The results were publicized by Discovery Channel and on other media sites. And they proved once again the genius of his. Uh, the, the genius of Da Vinci. They said that Cavallo may yet have a happy ending. He would have been made if we would have followed all the sequences, all the instructions through Da Vinci's codex for Grand Cavallo. And if we would pour in exact same series, we would have been able to fill up the mold in a few minutes time and it would solidify perfectly. And that's the final outcome, standing tall at two different places in the world. And one more thing that I have to mention before I I try I start showing you um, some of the CAD creations. So this is ingenuity and this is ingenuity back then. Although working principle wise they are completely different. Um, but before it was officially named ingenuity the helicopter Copter was internally referred by the NASA team as Leonardo in reference to his sketches of original helicopter design. So this is the first helicopter design we can say, although principle wise, probably it wouldn't prove effective. It wouldn't take off, but that's what he came up with. All right, so what I will do next is I will try to share my screen and try to show you some of the animations and SOLIDWORKS models. I hope everyone can see this self-propelled card. So solid modeling, assembly modeling, rendering, and then um, motion analysis, we can bring it to life. This is the swinging bridge. Really, really innovative idea, I must say. In days where the life is pretty normal you can use the bridge to cross the river but during the war time you can swing it on one side and you can stop the enemies from crossing the river and you can swing it on both the sides so that's even better and this one is his um pedal bot and how it was created.
All right, so this is the wing suit that we have been talking about. That's the entire assembly, CAD assembly. We can rotate it. And we can even explode it. We can see how each and every component will fit with respect to all other components. And this is the scythe chariot. Now, for this, I will try to show you how we can get the section view of this chariot. So that's the section plane in X direction. Or you can use the section plane in Y direction. Or maybe the Z direction. So that's how various sections can be obtained. Apart from that, um, let me show you a couple of um, SOLIDWORKS models. So that's the SOLIDWORKS assembly that I have at the moment. Um, now, let me tell you one more thing. None of this is my work. I've tried providing the links wherever I can to show you the original creator of those um, files. So that's the entire assembly. So many components have gone into this one particular assembly. And what I would try to show you is this motion analysis. So let me try to add a couple of motors. Right, so motors have already been added, one here and one there. And it's just a matter of And maybe one more time. So that is um, that. This is uh, one of the components, the rowing drive bar. And what I have tried doing with this particular one, and what, of course, Leonardo da Vinci could have done is the analysis, the stress analysis, the displacement analysis, the load analysis of on this particular bar. If um, we would apply a bit of torque here and if we try to see how it will go. So that's what we can see. This is the stress, highest stress taking place around this red regions, um, quite high as we can read from here. Displacement analysis we can have a look at the displacement how much displacement would have occurred so that's the displacement analysis and strain analysis as well so some of the basic CAD capabilities he could have used um, that's the canon assembly he could have easily created drawings from this That's the front view, top view, etc. That's the side chariot. Again, um, what I will try to show you with this is let me try to show this motion study first. that works.
and we can also easily create the drawings out of this so maybe let's make a drawing All right, so these are the three standard views that we can create. We can get rid of this. And what else I wanted to show you is how easy it would be to create a bill of material. Bill of material. And the kid would create the whole bill of material. It's quite a few components in this one. It won't fit on the drawing at the moment, but yeah, just wanted to show you how with a couple of clicks, we can just have entire bill of material here for the entire assembly. All right, so let me go back to my slides. Let me go through a um, few things that Leonardo could have used from those CAD abilities. All right, so that's where we were initially. Let us move on and have a look at what modern CAD capabilities Leonardo could have used. So one of them is this simulation capability that he could have used. We have just seen the simulation on one of the rowing bar. So to make product development faster, less, ex less expensive, and safer, the scientists and engineers, they begin harnessing the power of computers to simulate and analyze these complex <laughs> engineering problems. And it all started around 1940s. So that marked the beginning of modern era of simulation analysis. Now with simulation in CAD, potential real world conditions and environments can easily applied to the product, to the part, and we can easily simulate and we can obtain the results like this how much the maximum stress would be, what would be the highest temperature, the amount of displacement, etc. So as I've tried showing you through SOLIDWORKS, um, Leonardo could have easily been able to simulate most of his components using CAD and the simulation analysis. Next interesting capability he could have used is computational fluid dynamics. So CFD is the analysis of fluid flows using numerical solution methods. And with CFD, we can analyze complex problems involving fluid, fluid, fluid solid, or fluid gas interactions as well. <coughs> Here are some of the examples. This is the Tesla car, CFD analysis of Tesla pump. And I already mentioned this too. And also ingenuity, um, one of my favorite objects, of course. So Yes, um, he could have easily used the CFD capability to simulate his amazing inventions of various um, water lifting devices. At that time, they were considered as water lifting devices instead of pumps. So they, he would have been able to do that. Next cat capability he would have been able to use is this tolerance analysis. I'm not sure if many of us are aware of this, but yeah, tolerance analysis is the name given to a number of processes which are used to determine the overall variation and effect of variation on product, which stems from inf imperfections in manufactured parts. So when we try to manufacture different parts at different facilities using different machines and processes, they are not perfectly perfect. When we say that we are using a 20 millimeter diameter bar, the diameter could be 19.99 millimeter or it could be 20.01 millimeter. 
So these are some of the imperfections. And when I've tried showing you the scythe chariot, just imagine those many components. Each and every component will have slight variations, slight imperfections. And when we try to assemble them together, the last moment realizing that they, they won't fit together because of those imperfections summing up on the end result. So as part of tolerance analysis process, both the original source of variations are determined as well as they are stacked up. And the combined variation of all the parts in a given assembly is calculated there. So any CAD tolerance analysis tool, it can automatically check the effects of final tolerances on parts and assemblies. And beforehand, it could have been able to tell Leonardo da Vinci that, hey, Leonardo, this wouldn't fit together. We need to change a couple of things here and there, and then only we can proceed further for the assembly. Next important capability he could have used is motion simulation or motion analysis. I have been talking about this a lot. Um, the motion simulation, it provides complete and quantitative information about kinematics. That includes position, velocity, and acceleration analysis. And it also includes the dynamics, that is joint reactions, inertial forces, um, different power requirements on all different components of a moving mechanism. Um, so he could have been able to do the simulation, motion simulation on most of his inventions, and he could have seen how each and every invention would have performed after being assembled together. He had great interests in anatomy as well, how all different parts of body work with respect to each other. So probably he could have been able to simulate various human parts or skeletons as well, not just humans, other animals as well, with motion simulation and motion analysis capabilities of CAD. This is 3D rendering capability. So it is all about creating a graphically perceivable depiction of the object from otherwise abstract and complex collection of digital data. So probably he being a genius could understand his own sketches, but to make it easy for other people to understand, maybe easy to understand for his employer, he could provide some 3D rendering to his architectural sketches, to the sketches of his machines, and he can show that, oh, this is how they are going to look like when we create them. Next capability of CAD software he could have used is surface modeling. So basically um, giving the ability to build out a visual representation of an object's exterior with its contours. So he could have created all complex surfaces using this capability of CAD software. Next and more modern one is um, PDM, product data management. So PDM, it's a system of managing design data and engineering processes in one central location. Engineering teams, they can use this software to organize product related information. They can track revisions, they can collaborate, they can manage change orders, generate bill of materials, and they can do a lot more with this. So it's a single source of project data. And with that, engineers can save time and they can also avoid mistakes. One person changing one thing at one place, it doesn't have to be being tracked by everyone else. The change is applied centrally and everyone is aware of that change. So it makes the life way easy. It improves um, design workflows. It en enhances collaboration, streamlines, various processes and sharing knowledge is made way too easy with this. So that is PDM. And then bigger picture is probably about PLM, product life cycle management. So product life cycle management software is a tool that manufacturers and designers, they can use to manage a product's data from inception all the way until it's this, uh, its disposal. And that's why product life cycle, starting from design all the way up to end of the life. So manufacturers, designers, and engineers, um, they must all communicate during the production stage. This particular software will offer a space to house all the products information in one central location, not just product data, all the information that you can think of. So, um, 
this sort of software or capability of CAD, it would have given Leonardo the ability to engage his apprentices on various projects, more effectively monitor their, pro uh, their progress very closely, and um, he could have given him more efficiency as well. Um, he has left so many of his inventions unfinished, as I mentioned earlier, and probably he could have avoided the tag. Some people do refer to him as the great procrastinator as well. He wasn't actually, but yeah, he could have avoided the tag with this sort of PDM. And PLM, of course. Um, next is the digital twin. A um, bit too much for that era, of course, but I, I have to mention this being one of the most modern CAD abilities. So digital twins, they are the key to efficiency when it comes to product development and virtual commissioning of a machine. Um, software will generate digital twins from CAD data and data is imported in particular format that makes it possible to utilize all important pro properties of CAD design, like mass, density, etc. And then developers are able to run the virtual model of the machine right on the PC and connect with the controller. And with no additional effort, the machine model can also be viewed using virtual reality or augmented reality headsets. Free from any distractions, developer can work directly on simulated machines. Just imagine what he could have done with this sort of capability. All right, to sum it up, what Leonardo could have achieved. So possibly he would have produced similar technologies and he could have been able to produce them faster or more accurate, accurately than he could with ink and paper. So faster drawing ability, but certainly he would have benefited from that. He would have actually produced them instead of just keeping them on pen and paper. The analysis and simulation tools he could have used to simulate his weapons and he could have made them more accurate and less time to market. And that would also greatly reduce um, his cons. He would also be able to validate besides on software before actually manufacturing them. <coughs> Just try to imagine the all sorts of trial and error if he would have produced something with all those inaccuracies, how many trials and errors he have to go through while assembling all those components. So that accuracy could have been achieved through simulations. He could have determined that many of his great ideas were not possible earlier and then in very early stages, if he could realize this, he can move on to the next one. So he could have saved that time as well. And I'm sure uh, his employer, Duke of Milan, would have liked to know how much those certain great inventions would cost. So Leonardo could plug in some cost estimates and he can easily give him bill of materials and based on that, the cost analysis for a given invention. I would also imagine if he would find out that working with blacksmiths and low grade iron along with wood or lots of wood at that time would take forever uh, for a particular invention to come to life. But with um, CAD software, I'm pretty sure he would have given us more tools, more structures, more vehicles that would actually work and that were actually built instead of just staying as um, this codices. All right, one question from my side, any limitations? to this hypothetical question that you can think of. Please let me know through the chat box, everyone, um, if you can think of any limitations.
Emily is suggesting maybe Leonardo wouldn't like computers. Um, yeah, that could be the case. Thiben is suggesting errors are still possible. Yes, we are humans after all. Martin is suggesting type of material being used. Probably he would get frustrated. Very possible. Daniel, um, just hardware. Chen is suggesting costly trial and error, computer processing capacity. Yes, definitely. Um, Nikos Nati, he, he is such a genius and he would have overcome all those um, difficulties and challenges. Um, he is still a polymath of all the time, I would say, and probably I wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Yeah, he might be dis get distracted as well. Um, it's a fast-paced society, but I'm just considering the time when he was there and he could have used the CAD, not in the modern time, of course. Cost of material being used in software, material span, properties, material properties, and new technologies. Yes, um, pretty much possible he wouldn't like the modern technology. He would have his own ways of doing the things and yeah so one thing is electricity which wasn't that during renaissance time the second thing is lack of materials so can we consider that as a limitation or can we consider that as an opportunity to explore more for him we'll just leave it to him and i will leave you all with this great quote which i like i mention i use all the time so Knowing is not enough, we must apply. And being willing is not enough, we must do. By Vinci himself. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. And all the best. Thanks, Artie. That was a great uh, presentation. Um, I especially liked the um, the simulation, um, the motion simulation and analysis. That was that was really fascinating. So um, thank you for that. Um, I'd like to let everyone know we've got um, a upcoming technical topic webinar um, on the first of July. Um, I'm just going to uh, put the link to that one in the chat box if anyone wants to register for that one and yeah so you can see the details of that one there and um, you can also visit our events page on our website if you would like to see our other webinars that we have um, upcoming so yeah be sure to check that regularly and for the certificate of attendance um, so you will need to um, you will need to fill out a form um, on a link in which I will provide now. Uh, the link is also on the screen for you. I've just put that in the in the chat box there. So please use that link um, and fill and complete that form there um, if you'd like to receive your free certificate of attendance for this webinar. Um, and they will be sent out in the next two business days. Um, so now we'll just hold a quick uh, Q&A session. Um, so Artie, if you'd just like to stay online with me, um, if anyone in the session has any, um, any questions at all um, for either of us, um, please, please post your question in the chat box and um, we will We'll try and answer it for you while we're in the session. Yep, I'm here, Riley. And this is our contact details as well. If anyone would like um, to go to our website or um, would like to have our phone numbers, um, my email address is also at the bottom of the um, the slide there. So if you have any questions um, or feedback about our webinars, please let me know.
I'll provide the um, the link to the certificate of attendance as well in the chat box again, in case anyone has missed it. Um, RT, I think we've got a question from um, from Jean. Oh, yeah, you've answered it. So, yeah. solid is it SolidWorks? Is the main software that we use. And apart from that, for CFD analysis, ANSYS is being used. Okay, thank you for that. If anyone else um, does have any questions, um, any technical questions or or general questions um, about EIT or our courses, um, just please post them in the chat box. I think we've got another question um, from Daniel. We don't exactly have civil FEM at the moment, Daniel, but yes, we do use SOLIDWORKS and it can be, um, it has a lot of capabilities that can be applied to civil as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, if you need to leave, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, but we'll, we'll stick around for an extra couple of minutes um, in case anyone has any further questions. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.